Thank you very much. Today I've been asked to speak about the lives of great 11th century female disciples based on a translation of some biographies of early Landre lineage masters that was undertaken by Venerable Kimball Kal Sung Jeltsin and myself some uh, years ago. And those, uh, common, that those biographies have been uh, published in a booklet called Biographies of Great Men and Women Disciples of Dromi Lotsawa and Sachin Kungalimbo. So today I'm going to uh, speak a little bit about their holy lives. First I'd like to, however, open with a, a brief auspicious prayer. Tseden chiche chena bozerje Dalo timu mumparab sane Kadan tinju jono topaye Lodu pope nakwa tsal du so She ja tamje ze pe chen yang padro kunge le du pe tu je chen Same tren le ze pe tongawa Jangon la me shabla gu cha sa Na wang ju tu la ri kong ju dong ru kung ga zi ti chin dong a lam Pen de pa du ba wei trin li chin san pe wang gi cha pu tu shi so The lives of women disciples have always been uh, important in the history of the Dharma, although often not as well documented as the lives of men disciples, women have always been there and they've always played an important role that's been especially important during the uh, eras in which the Dharma is being established in new countries. For example, during the establishment of the uh, Buddha's teaching during the life of the Buddha himself. Um, there are many accounts of great women disciples recorded in the Terigata and also in the sutras themselves. And we can see from the lives of the Buddha's um, aunt, Mahaprajnapati Gautami, who was the founder of the Order of Nuns, and the life of uh, Yasodhara, uh, the mother of uh, the Buddha's son, Rahula, and other great women of the time, that there were many great women siddhas in the time of the Buddha as well. As we know, um, the Buddha Dharma came uh, to Tibet, uh, beginning slowly um, around uh, in the very first uh, contacts, uh, it came earlier, but the first um, major wave of establishment of the Dharma was during uh, the year 700 when Padmasambhava was uh, and Shantarakshita and others brought the Dharma from India to help to establish it in Tibet. At that time there are famous women disciples such as uh, the consort of Padmasambhava and uh, others whose holy biographies have been recorded from the early years of the establishment of the Dharma in Tibet. Then, um, after the 700s, um, when the Dharma was established, it grew and prospered and began to develop uh, the monastic uh, tradition along with it, and uh, it flowered for a couple of hundred years. Samyin Monastery was established by Padmasambhava and Shantarakshita, and sutras were translated, and things uh, became quite well developed. Then around the year 900, um, un there was a, a great um, destruction of the Dharma, and things went backward again for a couple of hundred years, beginning with the reign of a king named Long Dharma. The um, great monasteries, uh, many were looted and destroyed, uh, translated texts were scattered, and uh, the monastic tradition was largely eradicated. There were only uh, actually uh, properly ordained uh, monks uh, on the uh, edges of the uh, Tibetan kingdom at the time, it's said. 
Then beginning again uh, in the 11th century, uh, around the year late 10,000s or early uh, 11,000, 1100s, uh, the Dharma began to be reestablished by great masters who went to India to study from the Indian masters and brought uh, a, a new a tradition of the Dharma back to Tibet. This is called the Sarma tradition. And uh, during this period, one of the great translators' names was Dromi Lodzawa. Dromi went, um, uh, Dromi was, um, was during the late part of the 900s, uh, he returned, he went to India, and during, uh, and just before uh, the turn of the year uh, 1000, he returned back to Tibet, bringing a number of translations of great um, sutras and tantras, and especially he brought the Landre tradition with him. And Dromi Lotsawa taught the Dharma widely in Tibet. Uh, at that time, he had a number of famous disciples, among whom were some very important women who became very highly realized. Also, uh, later, about a hundred years later, Sachin Kunga Ningbo, the first of the five founders of the Sakya order, studied from the spiritual descendants of Dromi Lotsawa. From Dromi Lotsawa, uh, there was Setong Kurink, Shantong Chumbar, then um, Sachin Kunga Ningbo. So there's um, Actually, Dromi Lotsawa, Setong Kunrin, Shantong Chumbar, Sachin Kunga Ningbo there. Uh, Sachin Kunga Ningbo is uh, the fourth generation, about 100 uh, years of uh, spiritual uh, development of the early Lundri tradition. Sachin Kunga Ningbo also had important uh, female disciples, and he wrote, um, or he, he taught the Lundri to a number of uh, women, who, and the special Landre commentaries that he gave for those women are preserved still to this day, along with the circumstances under which he gave them. So we can see in both cases that in the case of um, the early establishment of the Buddha Dharma in India with our Lord Buddha Shakyamuni, also the bringing of the Dharma to uh, Tibet with Padmasambhava, and then, then again, the reestablishment of the Buddha Dharma in Tibet during uh, the uh, 10th uh, century and early 11th century. In this time, the, all of the uh, master's disciples included women and that there were important teachings given to them. They attained high realization and their names are uh, recorded in the historical texts. So it's quite interesting to uh, review the lives of these women and understand the circumstances under which they were, uh, they came to enter the Dharma, how they practiced it, and how they attained realization. It's interesting not just for historical reasons, but because now the Dharma is also uh, in the process of going to new countries and new lands. And so we're also now uh, in a time of the pioneering of the Dharma in the West. And uh, again now, uh, women practitioners have a uh, excellent opportunity and chance to uh, study, uh, contemplate, and realize the teachings, as did the women of uh, ancient days as well. So now um, I'd like to describe some of the <coughs> disciples of Dromi Lotsawa. Again, Lotsawa means translator, and Drokmi was the name of a uh, Buddhist master who went to India, brought back um, many teachings, including tantras, and especially the Landre teaching. He was, um, he had seven disciples who attained the high stage of a Mahasiddha, whose um, spiritual accomplishments and spiritual power allowed them to be able to perform miraculous deeds. Three of the seven disciples were men, and four of them were women. So over half of his highly accomplished disciples, whose names we have recorded, uh, were women. And these um, holy biographies have been taken from the Landre Kokpo, which means the um, uh, kind of uh, 
condensation of the uh, long, uh, what could say, anatomy and outline of the long great teaching by Sakipa uh, Nawankunga Sona. So, um, Dromi Lotsawa had, as I said, seven disciples, three of whom were men. The three men disciples, famous men disciples who attained high uh, realization, were uh, Chegong Sewo, who was a very um, well-born young man who came with um, good intelligence, um, background, training, uh, many offerings, and uh, uh, excellent social position to study from Dromi Lotsawa. He received the teachings, uh, meditated for 13 years, and attained very high realization, and uh, passed uh, into um, higher realms at the end of his life. The second of his disciples, uh, another man, was uh, Shigong Rokpo, who uh, was actually from a family of poem tra practitioners. And he, uh, his uncle was a famous bone teacher, and he respected his uncle, and, and until his uncle passed away, he followed in the family tradition. But after his, fa his uncle passed away, he began to develop some doubts about the bone tradition, and he came to study from Dromi Lotsawa. And he received from Dromi Lotsawa the Landry teaching, and then um, after that, he went to meditate for 13 years, after which he went to the area of Mount Kailash, where he taught bone people about the Buddha Dharma, and then after that, he uh, was able to depart for the higher realms, um, actually riding on the ray of uh, us, the ray, uh, a ray of sunshine, etc. The third of um, Dromi Lotsawa's male disciples was named Upa Dropoche. <coughs> Excuse me. He used to be a bandit, a very fierce bandit, and in fact, um, he stole many things and uh, profited by taking them to other places and selling them. He also caused a lot of trouble in his family and uh, came with a very uh, bad reputation and many heavy um, negative karmas to Dromi Lotsawa. And then uh, Dromi Lotsawa gave him uh, instruction and initiation and um, quite quickly uh, Upa Dropoche attained high uh, realization and uh, he attained the high, the, um, the stage of a Mahasita as well. So as we can see, um, the three male disciples of Dromi Lotsawa were all uh, quite um, well-born, uh, fairly um, well-situated um, uh, people from, except with the exception of the bandit, but he was also a very powerful and active uh, person, so we can see that his three male disciples, uh, uh, the characteristics of the, of the men. Now we begin to explain the biographies of the four female disciples who were also special recipients of the Landre teaching from Dromi Lotsawa. The first one's name was named uh, Drago Makone. She was um, married to a man and after only a year of marriage, her husband passed away. And she became so terribly sad that she mourned and mourned and mourned. And it's said that she sobbed and cried uh, for extremely long periods of time, for days and days, and couldn't be uh, calmed. And one day, when she was sobbing and sobbing uh, with uh, sorrow for the loss of her husband, Dromi Lotsawa happened by her house and heard her crying. And uh, he asked who she was and why she was sad. And uh, having uh, heard that, Dromi Lotsawa uh, realized that she had some very special uh, kinds of, perhaps, uh, karmic experiences arising within her and that she might be a ripe vessel for the teachings. So he asked that she be brought to him, and when she came, um, 
he was able to uh, give her a blessing to dispel her hindrances, and she became calm. And um, after she rested for a while, then uh, he said, how are you feeling now? Have your obstacles been removed? And uh, she said, did you teach me something? Did, did you give me instructions? I, I don't remember anything. I've completely forgotten everything, even how many days I've been here and how I came. And the Lama said, um, this is very good. Uh, when you have uh, this kind of a complete clearing of your mind after such a sad and difficult uh, obstacles, then it shows that you're a very um, pure and ready vessel for understanding the good qualities of the Triple Gems. So he gave her oral instructions and meditation, and she soon became uh, able to sit in meditation for 24 hours without moving. And then after that, Dromido Sawa continued to give her more instructions and empowerment, and she practiced more and more. And the um, history explains that she um, began to have very, very powerful meditation sessions. Once, uh, when uh, Dromino Tsawa gave a Dharma gathering, um, she sat f in meditation for seven days, uh, completely without moving. And she is said to be an exemplar, or a very good example of disciples who attain blessings on the path of devotion. And she attained the stage of Mahasiddha without abandoning her body. And uh, she went to meditate in the mountains, in the Podong Range, where people brought her food in her meditation cave. And at the end of her life, she departed for Odiana. So we can see that the first um, uh, of Dromi Lotsawa's disciples, Dragoma, uh, attained her realization and her entry into the spiritual path as a result of extreme grief and a complete mental breakdown after the uh, passing away of her husband. The second um, of Dromi Lotsawa's famous uh, female laundry disciples was named uh, Tsomo Dorje Tso, and she also experienced a very terrible uh, situation early in her life. She was uh, married to a man and bore seven sons. Then one day her family's, uh, the place where she, her family lived, was attacked by bandits. And her husband and all seven of her sons were killed in front of her on the very same day. And all of their possessions were stolen and uh, she was left with nothing. And she lost consciousness from her grief and shock, and for five days she didn't awaken. And her relatives came and found her and uh, took her home, cared for her, but she was completely broken in her mind. And then she was uh, taken to Dromi Lotsawa, who uh, had a reputation as being expert in restoring um, the mind of those who had kind of lost their mind or their consciousness due to shocking situations. So Dobi Lotsawa gave her blessings and she awoke. And uh, immediately when she awoke, Dobi Lotsawa uh, instructed her in meditation. And she got a um, very good realization right from the beginning. And he continued to teach her and she meditated very uh, strongly and she re achieved very high realization and attainment. And she also um, must have been a very strong Vajrayogini practitioner because it's said that she um, departed to the Kachari realm without leaving her body, which means at the end of her life that um, she must have remained in meditation posture for a very long time. So she's uh, said to be an example of a disciple who has the natural gathering of the elements necessary for higher realization that uh, is based upon strong karmic connections. The third of uh, Dromi Lotsawa's famous uh, Landry disciples was um, 
uh, a high-born woman from a good family who um, had not, the, who, for whom the very uh, difficult circumstances of her two previous Dharma sisters apparently didn't occur. She was um, the daughter of a lord named Lord Jalpo, and she had seven brothers. She was the only girl, and she was very uh, well-educated and intelligent with a very strong interest in the Dharma. She came to uh, visit <coughs> Romi Lotsawa, bringing many offerings and requested instruction. And Romi Lotsawa was very uh, pleased to accept her and gave her empowerment. During the first empowerment that she received, during the third empowerment in the major initiation, she um, experienced the simultaneous arising of great bliss. And she remained in meditation immediately after receiving the third empowerment. She remained in meditation in that position until mid-morning of the next day. And when she arose from her meditation, she prostrated to Dromi Lotsawa and offered um, her appreciation in the form of a beautiful verse saying, I met the Guru, the real Buddha, and immediately received blessings from the mind of the Buddha himself. Without abandoning the realm of samsara, I have purified samsara. I have already accomplished the great goal. So in this way, uh, within her first major initiation, upon receiving the third initiation, she was able to attain very, very high realization. And at the age of, um, she continued to meditate and deepen that experience and by the age of 25, she's said to have been able to perform miracles and uh, had very strong clairvoyance. And then she departed for Odiana uh, soon after that. 